Hello class. This is Jeffrey Kahn. I'm your instructor for Composition 2 this summer. I'm very glad you could uh, be in my class. I'm looking forward to working with you this summer and, and reading your, your essays and your writings. Uh, I think it'll be a very interesting, fun, and certainly fast-paced course. We have sort of a shorter summer term than usual this summer due to the COVID-19 crisis. Normally a full summer semester is 12 weeks. We only have 10 weeks. So we will be uh, moving at a fairly brisk pace. Uh, I wanted to take a little bit of time to uh, kind of walk you through some of the more important uh, policies and components of Blackboard that uh, I think you will uh, want to know about and, and that you will be using uh, quite a bit this summer. I, I hope that, you know, during this week you've uh, been studying the material in the Start Here portion of our Blackboard course and you've been sort of reading and absorbing that information. I'm going to highlight some of that material for you in this presentation. Not all of it, of course, but uh, I'm going to try to hit upon and emphasize some of the more important things. So I'm going to go ahead and call up Blackboard. using our screen share function here. And once you sign into Blackboard, of course, this is your sort of Blackboard home screen. And there's a lot of information on this screen. I'll point out here on the left-hand side, we have a panel of tools. And many of these tools you will also find in our uh, course site. Uh, they're also here on the home page, uh, including the gradebook, uh, the send email tool, the calendar, um, as well as the BrainFuse tutoring. And I'm going to show you those things fairly quickly here in a little bit. Of course, we want to scroll over, look on, on the right hand side here and scroll the course that you're enrolled in. I'm teaching two sections of Composition 2. They're both identical this, uh, this summer. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Section 34 site for this tour. And the first page that you're taken to uh, after you click on the class link is the announcements page. So basically any time that I post something important onto Blackboard, uh, maybe it's a quiz, maybe it's instructions for an essay, uh, anything at all, uh, I'll make an announcement. That announcement will appear on this page and that announcement is also sent to your ACC email uh, inbox. So whenever you get an announcement in your email, um, when you have time, go ahead and sign into Blackboard and take a look at that announcement here on this announcements page. At the bottom of an announcement, there's usually going to be a link. So this announcement is a welcome sort of message, uh, but it really stresses the material in the start here portion of Blackboard. So I have a link to the start here page in Blackboard. So you can look at the bottom of an announcement and basically link directly to the material that the announcement is, is focusing on. Let me go ahead and click on that start here link. And that'll take us to the start here material. As you can see on the left hand side in this blue panel, we have our table of contents or our menu, depending on what you want to call it. 
And I'm just going to kind of walk through all of these things from top to bottom. The start here material is what I really want to focus on in this presentation. So here's our start here page. We begin with just some contact information for me, including my email. Um, we haven't yet determined our office hours yet. Hopefully you've had a, an opportunity to hop into that Google survey that I sent out to you and cast your vote. Uh, my plan is to send out a second survey and have you guys vote one more time, uh, probably vote amongst two or three choices. And whatever is getting the highest vote will make that the office hours. Uh, the plan is to have one hour of office hours followed by one hour of review. And I'll talk about how you'll access that review session uh, a little later on. For now, let me just say that the review session is totally optional. It is not required. During review sessions, I will sort of cover assignment instructions, uh, talk about stories that we're currently reading, uh, take questions from anyone who shows up, and I'll be recording those review sessions. So if you miss it or you can't make it, uh, you can always go back in and uh, watch the recording of a review session. Uh, this class is what we call an asynchronous class. It's a, it's a, it's a, a full-blown distance learning online class. So we are not holding regular class sessions we will not be meeting online as a, as a class, um, except for, like I say, these optional review sessions, totally optional, not, not at all required. Uh, as a result of the asynchronous nature of this class, it's really going to be up to you to keep pace with the material. Uh, you want to be read up on everything that's available on Blackboard, everything that I'm directing you to review and read and study and look at. Uh, you want to make sure that you're reading all the short stories that I'm assigning you. And of course, submitting essays on time, taking quizzes before their deadlines, posting to the discussion board when you're asked to, etc. cetera. Uh, I do have listed here at the top um, my online tutoring hours, in addition to teaching uh, for the English department here at ACC, I'm also an instructional associate in the learning lab at Eastview Campus. That's basically a fancy title that means senior tutor. And I'm an English and writing tutor. And of course, everything's online at the moment, so all the tutoring is also online. But I have tutoring hours um, this summer, every weekday from 10 to 2. And what I have here is a link to the online tutoring form. So if you'd like to meet with me during my tutoring hours, go ahead and fill out this form. You have the opportunity to request me in person. Um, when it asks you for what campus you want, uh, here's the select campus menu, go ahead and choose Eastview Campus. That's technically the learning lab that I work for. And again, you can not only put my name as the instructor's name, but it also asks if there is a particular tutor that you'd like to work with. So you can put in my name there. And then uh, I will respond to you and we can set up a tutoring session. OK, um, beyond that, uh, you know, if you can, if you have questions and you, you need to talk to me and you can't make the office hour, um, that's perfectly fine. It is going to be, I think, very easy to make appointments with me pretty much at any other time. I I'm sitting at home <laughs> and when I'm not tutoring, I'm going to be grading papers and working on the class. So it'll be, I think, very easy for us to make an appointment outside of those office hours and outside of tutoring hours. So if you ever have any questions or you want to meet with me and you want to make an appointment uh, to meet online, just email me, let me know, and we can, we can set that up. We are asking next that you post to the discussion board, and a number of people have already done that. But if you haven't, please go ahead and um, introduce yourself. 
to say a few things about yourself. And I'm going to be adding a little bit about myself as well. Uh, next, we have a folder called the Essential Course Information folder. So let's go ahead and open that. We have kind of a lengthy welcome message. This message, along with the announcement uh, that I sent to your inboxes, um, sort of comprise the official <laughs> welcome to the class. Um, you know, go ahead and read this if you haven't already. I talked a little bit about uh, Composition 2 being a core curriculum course. It is required of most every ACC student. Um, and frankly, no matter, you know, what college or university you go to, uh, chances are you're going to be required to take both Composition 1 and Composition 2. These are almost Univer uh, almost universally required. There are some degree programs that might not require Comp 2. Uh, business students, for instance, might take a business and technical writing course instead of Comp 2, so it just kind of depends. But most students are required to take Comp 2. Well, why? Well, the, the, ra the, the fundamental rationale is that um, composition instructors are teaching students how to write at the college level and giving students practice at writing at the college level. Um, you're going to be taking lots of classes in college and you're going to be assigned lots of papers by various professors, psychology professors, government professors, history professors. Uh, I've had students work with me in the learning lab on physics papers. Uh, the first year of tutoring, I helped a student with a research paper in her air conditioning and heater repair class. So there's all kinds of papers being assigned by all kinds of professors for all kinds of classes. Uh, but you know what? Those professors really aren't going to take a lot of time to teach students how to write those papers. So that's kind of where composition courses come in. For composition two, uh, the thing that we're going to be writing about uh, will be literary short stories. So this is an English class. So not only are we giving you some writing practice, but we're also sort of uh, shoehorning in a little bit of literature studies as well. Go ahead and read that welcome message if you haven't already. The next section is about the textbook. And I'll show you the textbook here in a little bit, but uh, your textbook is called 40 Short Stories, a Portable Anthology. It's the fifth edition. Uh, it is embedded in Blackboard. It's a digital textbook. Um, you do have the option to opt out of using the digital textbook. Uh, this is a, a class known as the first day textbook class. That means when you signed up for this class and paid tuition, you paid for the textbook. And the textbook is here in Blackboard for you now. Um, if you are someone who doesn't like to read textbooks on the computer, you can opt out of this digital textbook and get a refund for the book. But you will be required to get a copy of the book on your own. and that copy, that hard copy of the book is, chances are, going to be more expensive than the digital copy. So if you are interested in opting out, I, I really don't recommend it. I hope you don't do it. But if you do, it's your choice. Um, here in the textbook section um, are some instructions on how to do that. We've got a couple of videos here about how to opt out. Um, the hardback, or I'm sorry, the uh, uh, print copy of the book, like I say, is going to be a little bit more expensive. But if you do insist upon getting it instead of using the digital copy, you must have the fifth edition of the book. Uh, earlier editions of the book will not contain all of the short stories that you may need this summer. Next is the technology requirements. This is a fully online class, so you definitely need regular access to the internet, reliable computer. Again, we're not meeting 
uh, officially, so it's not like you necessarily need a camera or a microphone in your computer. But if you do want to talk to me uh, during office hours or ask questions during the review session or make an appointment with me, um, having a microphone certainly will be helpful, although we can chat as well uh, if you prefer to do that. So uh, you want to have a good uh, browser. Now, <clears throat> it says here Safari. Uh, I've been getting some um, emails from some students who are having trouble opening the textbook. And so far, all of those students are using Macs and using Safari. So unfortunately, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Mac guy myself, but unfortunately, Safari um, is not a great browser. And for whatever reason, it will not open up the textbook. At least it won't open it up on some students' computers. So the fix so far has been for those students to just download Google Chrome and use that browser instead on their Macs. And that's been working so far. Uh, you will be using Blackboard a lot. This is our sort of headquarters for the class. Everything that you need for the class is on Blackboard. Uh, I email you guys a lot with updates, um, notices, and announcements. So you want to be monitoring your ACC email all the time for messages from me, you know, as well as your other professors and from the college in general. Uh, if you have not uh, activated your ACC email address, please do that very quickly. Um, I will not be responding to email addresses that are not ACC email addresses starting the second week. Um, I have some information here about how to access free word processing. Uh, as an ACC student, you can download Microsoft Office 365 for free. There's a link that will explain those instructions. You have other options as well here. Uh, but of course, we all have Google accounts uh, at ACC. We're a Google campus, and that means we have Google Drive. And within Google Drive, we have Google Docs, and that is a word processing application. And you will be using that a lot this summer. Um, when you submit papers to me, I convert them into Google Docs, comment on them, and then share them with you through Google Drive. So you will be using Google quite a bit. If you'd like to learn more about Google Drive, I've got this link here. It'll take you to the library toolbox about Google Docs, and you can learn a little bit more about how it works there. Uh, we're also an Adobe Cloud Campus. We won't be using Adobe in, in this class, but you can um, access Adobe Cloud computing uh, for free or cheap. Um, depending upon you know what program you're in at ACC and if you go to this web page you can learn more about that uh, hopefully everyone's already got a computer but if you need an iPad or if you know a fellow student who is, is uh, needing a computer ACC is still checking out iPads and also offering Wi-Fi at certain campuses uh, I've got a little bit of information about netiquette um, you know when you post on the discussion board when you send me emails, um, when you are doing, you know, electronic communication for a class, you are composing professional communication. And that means we want you to spell correctly. We want you to use proper grammar, standard American English, um, all of these sorts of things. So go ahead and take a look at the netiquette guide. <laughs> We've got uh, a download here as well as an amusing link to a blog post about how to email your professor without being annoying. And uh, I think that's a very fun blog post to read. So check that out. And then last in this folder, we have a lot of information about the sort of general course description, the rationale, uh, as well as learning outcomes. Uh, up here at the top, we've got a couple of PDF documents you can download expectations of skills and knowledge for exiting comp one students so this is a list of things that you um, as a uh, 
successful composition one student should already know skills and knowledge that you should already have under your belt uh, and then we have a similar list for what you should know and be good at knowing and good at doing uh, after you're done with composition two. Uh, one note I'll make here is that any information in the start here section of Blackboard that is in italics, um, it comes from what we call the master syllabus. It's sort of a universal syllabus policy statement uh, that the English department has put together and anything that's in italics in here comes from that document and that that means that no matter uh, what composition two class it is uh, here at ATC uh, this information is going to appear in the syllabus and the policy material okay so scroll back up here we can navigate back to the start here page up here in this sort of top bar of course we can also go over here and go back to the start here page And let's take a look at our next folder. This folder is probably the most important folder in this section of Blackboard. Here we get a uh, very specific course policy. So the first thing we have up here is really just the policy statement. And really what this is, is just a, a single document. It's 10 pages long and it contains pretty much everything, not quite everything, but most everything that is on the other Blackboard uh, pages. So it's, this is just sort of one document that contains all of this stuff. Okay, what I've done is taken a lot of this stuff and deployed it and sort of distributed it around uh, the Start Here section of Blackboard, and that might make it a little more uh, easy to, to find and easier to read. Let's talk about the course requirements in terms of essays. This is obviously a composition two class. This is a writing intensive class. So the majority of the work you're gonna be doing in addition to reading short stories, is gonna be writing essays. The plan is to assign you five essays um, this summer uh, in addition to a departmental exam, which I'll talk about here in a little bit. Your first paper will be a plot summary of a short story, followed by a uh, central idea statement. And I've emailed that out to you, and I'll be posting that on Blackboard very soon. And each successive paper uh, just gets a little bit more advanced in terms of elements of fiction and uh, analysis of short stories. So plan on writing five essays for me this summer. Um, we've got you know, a number of bullet points here in italics, but I want to hit this point here. You need to write all of those papers and have all of those papers pass in order to pass the course. So don't plan on skipping any papers. Um, if there are any papers that you write that are not accepted or not passing, uh, those need to be revised so that they ultimately do pass. And I'll talk about grading here in just a little bit. Uh, papers need to be in MLA format. I'll be posting information about what that means in our first module. Uh, we'll be posting a schedule of due dates here probably this weekend, very soon. So you'll know when those papers are due. Paper one will be due uh, Friday the 12th. Revision policies. Basically, you need to revise a paper as many times as necessary for the paper to be accepted. We want revisions or edits due within three days of a paper being returned to you. So if you send me a paper, you turn in a paper, I comment on it, send it back to you, and the paper hasn't been accepted yet, it hasn't passed yet, I give you comments on how to edit it or revise it, you have three days turnaround time to resubmit that essay with the corrections. Again, this is a very fast-paced course, so you don't want to dilly-dally when it comes to working on revisions or edits of a paper. You need to get those in quickly 
and get those accepted. And one of the main reasons why <clears throat> is that, um, you know, you've turned in that paper and you're still working on it, but we're moving on into the next paper and that paper is going to have a due date. You have to write that paper and turn that paper in by the due date. Um, but I'm not going to read that new paper until your previous paper has been accepted. Okay, so if you're, you know, having trouble with the paper and getting it passed, getting it accepted, I want you to work with tutors. I want you to make appointments with me. You need to work hard in order to get that paper passing. Only then will I be reading your following paper and commenting on it and grading it for you. Uh, all papers need to be submitted and passed, like I said. Um, if you turn in a paper late, unless you have a really good excuse, you're not going to be eligible to pass the course. So you really need to honor the due dates that are indicated in the calendar, as well as any messaging that I send you through email or announcements. You will be sending papers in through the Safe Assign system in Blackboard, and I'll be posting a presentation that demonstrates how to do this. It's not hard at all, but I'll show it to you in this video eventually. Uh, and then, like I say, you'll be working in Google Drive in terms of edits and revisions, assuming you need to do that. Uh, I've got some information here about tutoring. <clears throat> Again, there are plenty of writing tutors here at the college. And ever since we went online in the spring, the tutoring, you know, has kind of gone down because students, a lot of them don't want to work with tutors online. It's just not as easy. Uh, but what that means is that there are tons of writing tutors available. So please take advantage uh, of them if you are having difficulty. Um, you know, I'll just be blunt about it. You're paying their salary. You're paying our salary. So tutors are a resource for you. Don't ignore them. Uh, don't not use them. If you need to use them, please work with a tutor. You may find that certain tutors are more helpful than others. So if you do find a tutor that works well with you, um, feel free to request that tutor again, you know, down the road. Um, the brain fuse tutoring, I'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Uh, quizzes, we'll be having fairly regular quizzes. I'll be posting a quiz over policy um, that'll have a, a deadline. Quizzes are really open book. Um, you know, you can open up the quiz, look at the questions, go back and refer to the material in order to answer the questions. I'm fine with that. Uh, quizzes will be uh, in Blackboard. They're, of course, all online, and there'll be a separate section of Blackboard dedicated to quizzes. Uh, you need to earn an average of a C, 70 points, um, on all of your quizzes in order to pass the course. And that should not be difficult for anybody considering quizzes are open book. Uh, if you do miss a deadline, um, you cannot take the quiz. There's no excuse for missing a quiz deadline. You know, I give you, I will give you several days to take one of these quizzes. So again, just always be monitoring your email, monitoring the announcements page of Blackboard. When a quiz is posted, I will send out an announcement and probably a reminder as well, letting you know that that's, that's coming up and that's due and that you need to do that. Discussion boards, uh, we can't meet in person. We're not meeting altogether online. So the way we will sort of talk to each other, so to speak, is through the discussion board. Uh, I will be posting prompts about stories and asking you to reply, uh, to create your own threads, as well as to respond to threads created by other students. Uh, when you post something to the discussion board, uh, I want you to write something thoughtful, something meaningful, something original. Uh, and my advice is to follow what we call the pie pattern. And we'll talk more about this later this summer. The pie pattern, you make a point, you illustrate that point with an example of some kind or some sort of illustration, and then you explain yourself and what you mean by that uh, example. That's a really good way to write 
critically and certainly a good way to write at a college level um, and that will work not only for essays but also you know some more uh, sort of uh, informal writing like uh, discussion board posts and of course don't forget follow those rules of netiquette the departmental exam <clears throat> is uh, you know some students call it the final exam that's not exactly accurate um, it's an essay that you will write near the end of the summer uh, I will give you more information about how you will do this uh, basically you'll be writing it through blackboard using a special lockdown browser system and a proctoring service um, and you'll be given a short story and you'll be asked to write an analysis of it identifying the story's central idea and linking various elements of fiction to that central idea uh, if you do not pass the departmental exam the first time you take it you may retest once uh, but you only have two these two attempts to take and pass the departmental exam so students who do not pass on the second attempt cannot pass the course and this is English department policy that is um, used in every composition to class. We'll talk much more about the departmental exam later on down the road this summer. Grading, of course, very important, grading. Um, the English department has multiple systems of grading that it allows us professors to use. I have a document posted up here you can download and take a look at that if you care to uh, but just know that when I grade your papers I do not give letter grades I give grades of accept edit revise or rewrite so a grade of accepted on an essay means that the paper is strong it fulfills the objectives and the criteria of the assignment and it's relatively free of errors speaking of errors I've got a big space here I'm not sure how that got there we'll close that up later if I give you a grade of edit that means that most of the objectives have been fulfilled but uh, the essay contains probably mostly mechanical errors things like grammar spelling punctuation errors uh, you know maybe some minor things in terms of development or organization um, you know things that can be edited out and, and fixed hopefully pretty pretty easily a grade of revise means that the essay requires sort of a deeper um, draft it, it requires a, 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 a revision and think about that word revision a revisioning or look re-looking and reconceptualizing the essay in some manner uh, it may be because it's simply not developed in the correct way or developed enough perhaps the organization is all wrong uh, perhaps there are issues of style there's all sorts of reasons why uh, an essay might be given a grade of revised and then a grade of rewrite it's a grade that I rarely give but occasionally I do basically a grade of rewrite means that you are misunderstanding the assignment and you've written an essay that is not on topic or not on the assignment really whatsoever so you could sort of have to scrap it and start over uh, I'll be giving you a rubric for each paper assignment I give you a rubric basically explains you know, what the criteria are um, it sort of takes you know information from the assignment sheet and and aligns it with these different types of grades so it'll give you a better idea of, of you know what you need to do in order to achieve the grade once again you want to complete submit and have accepted all papers in order to pass the course you can re revise or rewrite an essay as many times as you need in order to get it to a passing level but again you want to really hop on that and turn in those revisions or edits to me very quickly now I give grades of accept edit revise and rewrite on papers I give um, letter or number grades on quizzes and I'll also be grading um, 
your discussion board posts. So how do, how, do, how do all of these different types of grades ultimately turn into your final grade for the course? That's what this is about here. So in order to get a C in the class, all of your papers have to be accepted. You pass the departmental exam on the second attempt. That means you didn't pass it on the first attempt, but you do pass it on the second attempt. You complete all of your discussion board posts and you earn at least a C average on your quizzes. If you accomplish all of those things, you will get a C for the class. I do give grades of D occasionally. Um, if all of your papers were accepted and your discussion board posts are all complete and your quizzes are all good, but you did not pass the departmental exam on the second attempt, I will give you a grade of D. Now that is not a passing grade. That means you will have to take comp two again, uh, but it won't hurt your GPA quite as much as an F. In order to get a B in the course, you need to have all of your papers accepted. You need to pass the departmental exam on the first attempt you need to complete all discussion board posts and earn that C average on quizzes. If you do all of those things, I will give you a B for the course. If you want to earn an A in the course, I'm, I need to remind you that A stands for excellence. That is really what it means in terms of the letter grades. You need to have all of your papers accepted you need to pass that departmental exam on the first attempt. All your discussion board posts need to be complete. You need to have a C average on your quizzes and you need to write an additional paper. So this would be a sixth paper. We call it the A paper. It is a research paper. You will need to write that pretty much on your own you aren't going to get a lot of assistance from me or learning lab tutors on this paper, and that's English department policy. If you compose the A paper and it is accepted and everything else has been done, you will earn an A in the class. So I will be posting information about that A paper next week. If you want to shoot for an A, I admire you but you need to hop on that A paper quickly. You cannot sit and wait and do that A paper at the beginning of August or something like that, okay? That A paper needs to be begun soon and I'll give you more information about, like I say, the A paper next week. Um, really, it's best if you make an appointment with me and talk to me a little bit about what your plans are for the A paper. Uh, we have lots and lots of grading policy um, that has been uh, composed in the wake of the you know pandemic um, and I'm not going to go into detail about this you can read all of this on your own uh, a lot of this stuff really isn't going to be relevant until the end of the summer anyway uh, in short uh, if you get a passing grade an A a B or a C you can convert that to a grade of pass instead of the letter grade um, you know, for instance, you want to get an A in the class, but you ended up getting a C in the class. You'd rather not have the C on your transcript. You can convert that to a grade of pass instead. Uh, if you get a failing grade, a failing grade of D or an F, you can convert that to a grade of no pass. These are temporary policies in place as a result of the college going fully online and the college is just trying to recognize that, you know, not all students are are really fine learning. So we want to try to offer students this option in case they get a grade that they're not that happy with. Uh, the conversion period is August 14th through August 21st. And we can talk more about that, um, you know, later on this summer if you'd like. There's a link that will explain all of that stuff to you. Uh, if you end up 
you know, considering this, you want to take into account your own unique situation in terms of financial aid, in terms of your academic standing, in terms of transfer credit, all of these things are going to come into play if you make that decision. So you want to be talking to your advisors about that as well. Uh, it is possible to withdraw from the class. Uh, the last day to withdraw from the class is Monday, July 27th. You will get a W on your transcript if you withdraw. Um, that will not affect your GPA. But uh, you have to understand that the state of Texas has mandated that college students can only withdraw six times during their college career. Uh, if a student withdraws more than six times, that student can be placed on probation and not allowed to enroll for maybe up to two years. The state of Texas is very adamant about getting students into college and getting them graduated with degrees and the state does not want and then the college does not want students to be you know just hanging around for nine years uh, taking classes withdrawing from them taking classes withdrawing from them etc it's a waste of time it's a waste of money it's a waste of energy and resources so um, several years ago the state of texas instituted this policy so just be aware of that um, there's a fairly lengthy incompletes policy. Please just read this on your own. I'm really not uh, very interested in giving students incomplete grades. Um, there will have to be compelling reasons to do so. Uh, but it will be possible to potentially convert uh, an incomplete grade to a grade of withdrawal depending upon hardship. Okay, so please feel free to ask me questions about that uh, maybe later on in the semester when it becomes a little bit more relevant. All right. We have a folder dedicated to college policies and resources. I'm not going to go in, into depth uh, on this. Just please read this on your own. Uh, you know, every time you see this little icon with the little planet in front of a piece of paper, that's a link a web link, so you just click it to go to that page. This one's about the coronavirus information in ACC. Uh, accessibility, if, uh, if you have a uh, situation, uh, a disability um, that is documented that requires accommodation, uh, you want to be talking to the student accessibility services folks and working with them in order to get an accessibility um, form that you will then email to me. Uh, various college policies, we've got a link to the financial aid page. Here's another uh, link to the learning lab tutoring services. Uh, I've got several links here about tutoring uh, schedule schedules for tutors. Um, tutors are still working as if we're on campus, so we, we have certain hours that we work and we're affiliated with certain campuses. Uh, so if you're, you know, originally we're planning to take this class at Highland or Northridge or something, you can certainly request tutors from those campuses, but it really doesn't matter. You can request a tutor from any campus. You might want to look at the schedules to see, you know, who's tutoring what at what times. All right, library services, student services, student support. Uh, ACC has multiple uh, student support services available, including financial assistance for paying utility bills. Uh, ACC has received money under the CARES Act from the federal government as a result of the COVID-19 crisis, so students can apply for that funding. Um, there's a number of ways that ACC is here to, to try to help you uh, other than in the classroom. We have some information about mental health services here. Uh, we've got some lengthy material here about student standards of conduct, rights and responsibilities, uh, the disciplinary process, the complaint process. We've got links to the student handbook. So just sort of take a look at that on your own. That's good for you know any class, not just a comp two. 
We've got the freedom of expression and privacy information. Uh, we've got information about student safety, discrimination statement, Title IX. Uh, basically, Title IX uh, dictates that if any ACC faculty or staff learn that any fellow staff or faculty or students are the victim of uh, a Title IX um, Act that uh, is in violation of Title IX, uh, we are required by law to report it. So please just study this. Uh, I did go ahead and put the concealed handgun policy in here as well, although I'm not sure how relevant that is since we're not on campus. All right, we're almost done with the start here section. The last thing we've got is just a folder of tech support resources. So if you're having any trouble with logging in or navigating Blackboard, um, please visit this page. Um, we've got some instructions here about how to access a recording of a review session in Collaborate. And I'll be showing you Collaborate here in a few minutes. Uh, we've got a link to Collaborate Help, Blackboard Help, uh, how to join uh, a session of office hours or a review session and collaborate. It's very simple to do, but I've got instructions here on how to do it. You can also dial in to a Collaborate office hour or a Collaborate um, review session using your phone. If you have technical difficulties, you're certainly free to contact me about them. Um, I'm the English professor. I'm not a technician, so I don't know how much I'd be able to help you. I've been able to help some students with the whole textbook thing, uh, but so far that's been the extent of my tech help this summer. All right, so I'm going to try to move a little more quickly now. The main focus of this presentation was the Start Here material. Um, let's take a quick look at what's in the menu, our textbook is a digital book, and once you get to this page and click on access, the book will open in a new tab. And I recommend just, um, you know, just sort of playing around with it. Uh, I'm relatively new to this digital textbook, but we've got um, markup tools. You can make notes. You can highlight stuff. And those notes and highlights will be stored in your notebook over here on the left-hand side. Um, everything is, you know, very actively linked. So you can go to the table of contents and click on a story and it will take you right to it. You do have a limited amount of printouts. You can't print out the whole book, but you can print out a certain number of pages at a time. And you can cite the book as well using the citation tool. Now, citation is going to be something that um, I'm requiring you to do for paper one, and I'm taking a look at this citation here, and it doesn't look totally accurate. So just wait for my um, posting about citation in module one, and we'll make sure that you know how to cite this book correctly in your essays. Uh, by the way, the, the uh, look that I have, the, the interface that I have on Blackboard is slightly different from yours. Obviously, I'm the instructor. Um, for you guys, up in this top right corner, this is where you would see the opt out link. I don't have that. I don't have the option of opting out because I'm the professor. But the opt out link will be located up in here. The course modules. So we have a module for each paper. That means there'll be at least five modules. And each module will be basically dedicated to the focus of that paper. So module one uh, is going to be all about plot summary. 
and the central idea. Uh, so I'm in the process of populating this module folder. Again, just be on the lookout for emails and announcements about this. Um, this folder will be filled with slideshows, other presentations about plot and central idea, as well as the paper one instructions, rubric, sample, essay, uh, as well as the link that you'll use to submit the paper when the paper's due. We have a glossary of terms. So if you're ever stuck on a certain term that we're using in the instructions, um, if you have forgotten what third uh, person point of view means <laughs> or limited omniscient, uh, go ahead and go to the glossary and look that term up. The calendar. The calendar rep uh, will represent um, material from all classes that you are enrolled in this summer, not just our class. Um, this calendar will primarily reflect due dates for papers as well as quizzes. The course alerts page. Um, I've never really used this before, and I, I haven't had students use this in the past, but basically this is sort of a, a summary of what's due, what's coming up, uh, what's late. You know, if you did not turn something in, you'll get an alert about a past due assignment. Um, so you can kind of use this page to, to just kind of keep track of where you're at in terms of assignments and quizzes and things like that. Of course, here we've got a link to the discussion board directly. In the discussion board, we have our forums listed here. And the second forum is the self-introduction forum. So if you haven't done that yet, you'll just click that and compose a new thread in which you introduce yourself. And you start a thread by creating or uh, clicking the create thread link up here. And you also want to respond to at least two other students' threads. That's the first discussion board assignment. Um, we also have sort of a general form about questions. If you have any specific questions, you can post those here. Um, if you, you know, send a, a question to me personally in email that I think might, you know, the answer might benefit everyone, I might go ahead and, and post that question here as well. We've got the email tool. So of course you can just email, you know, directly from your ACC Google account. Uh, but we also have an email tool in Blackboard. You can email the entire class at once. I'm not sure why you would want to do that, but you could do that if you if you wanted to do do that. Uh, you can certainly you know set up a thread or a forum and discussion board too if you wanted to uh, start a conversation with the class. You're more than welcome to do that. You can also select users. If there's, you know, certain people that you want to email and you know their names, you can pick their names out of this list and email them through Blackboard. And that email will arrive in their ACC email inbox. Collaborate. So Collaborate is the sort of video conferencing tool uh, contained within Blackboard. I'm actually using Collaborate to record this presentation. Um, but it is within Collaborate that I will hold office hours as well as the optional review sessions. So when it comes time for office hours and you want to come into office hours, you will click on the Collaborate link here in the menu. And then it says Course Room. Go ahead and click that. It gives you a phone number and a PIN if you wanted to dial in, but hopefully you will, you know, have a microphone on your computer and you can just use that. Click 
join course room and you will enter the collaborate course room space and you want to make sure that you know you've given your browser permission to access your microphone assuming you want to speak um, you want to share audio by clicking this uh, when I'm in office hours and in the review session I will have my camera on but you don't need to have your camera on uh, if you just want to chat in the chat box here you're more than welcome to do that or like I say you can unmute your microphone and um, speak and we can we can talk close that out uh, like I said earlier I will be recording sessions the the optional review sessions and if you would like to view a recording of a session you will go into collaborate into this page and on the left hand side there's a drop down menu and recordings so the recordings will be listed here and I will label them with the date and you know maybe some other identifying information and you can click on the recording and you can actually watch the recording here within collaborate you don't need to download it or you know watch it in some other application you can watch it directly here in blackboard all right very quickly wrapping up the quiz page there are no quizzes posted yet but i'll be posting the uh, policy and orientation quiz here uh, Friday I believe very quickly uh, the grade book I'm not going to click that because if I do it you will see everyone's names um, but if you click it you will see your grades course evaluations this is basically at the end of the semester you will be asked to you know evaluate the class and evaluate me and now that we're all online there's a web page that you will do this on so this is the link to that page uh, we've got the online learning lab you click on that link and it will take you directly to that request form that we looked at earlier so I advise you know if you want tutoring definitely work with the learning lab tutors uh, you will be working with ACC staff ACC tutors and um, many of the writing tutors are also uh, composition professors okay so you know we, we sort of work both sides of the coin um, you also have the option of using the BrainFuse service BrainFuse is a third-party company that ACC contracts with and they offer tutoring so you can click on this tool this BrainFuse link and click the brain fuse tutoring button and this will open a new tab and you can get live help with all sorts of topics including English and you can connect and an available tutor will greet you and meet you within this brain fuse black uh, uh, whiteboard space and you can upload a paper and either chat or talk directly with the tutor uh, you can make an appointment with a tutor for a future session uh, or and this is something that my students have found useful in the past you can submit a paper um, basically you send the brain fuse tutors an essay draft and they will respond usually within around 24 hours so if you do this um, you know I'd be happy to and interested to hear what sort of feedback you get I always recommend that you submit not only the paper but the instructions maybe the rubric as well that will just give the brain fuse tutor a little more information to work with let me just be clear brain fuse tutors are not ACC tutors they work for the brain fuse company now having said that and I know this may be a little confusing 
but if you do work with a learning lab tutor by filling out this form and sending it away, the learning lab tutor, the ACC tutor, will ultimately invite you into a BrainFuse session. So we tutors at ACC are using the BrainFuse platform for tutoring, but it's sort of independent from this tool, this other method of working with BrainFuse tutors. I know that's maybe a little bit confusing, but um, BrainFuse is basically just a platform like Zoom uh, or Google Meet. Um, and it's designed supposedly for tutoring. <laughs> so the BrainFuse tutors use it since they're the ones who are, work with the company. Uh, but ACC is also allowed to have access to it to use it for our own tutoring purposes. Finally, we have a linked tools. Um, several of these tools are things we've looked at already. Collaborate, uh, the gradebook, uh, the calendar, uh, send email, glossary. This is just sort of a collection of all of those tools all in one location. All right, so that's it. That's our tour of Blackboard. I hope it was useful and helpful. Uh, if you have any questions about policy, um, please ask. Uh, if you have, you know, if you're wondering about policy, go ahead and look in the start here material and see if you can find the answer. But if you can't or you're unclear about anything, you know, please ask. I'm more than happy to uh, to take questions about it. Um, I will also point out here in Blackboard, uh, they've added this little support tool. Um, you can get help navigating Blackboard by clicking that little question mark icon. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for your patience. I uh, hope we didn't bore you to death with that. Um, Take care, stay well, and you'll be hearing from me again very soon uh, regarding paper one.